Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship service. And can I wish you all, to those who are here and indeed to those who are listening online, a very happy uh, new year. Uh, strange times, I know, but nevertheless, it is a new year. And by the grace of God, we welcome it. And indeed, we pray that God will help us indeed to live this year uh, in his strength, uh, certainly with uh, his peace and his joy as we worship him, not just today, but indeed every day that God gives us. Just a, a number of intimations, if I may. Uh, first of all, can I say that from next Sunday, for the next few Sundays at least, we are going to begin a new series of sermons on the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. And the title of that series will be Facing and Building the Future God's Way. It's a long book. Uh, it is not a verse by verse series, but certainly it will be thematic and indeed plenty for us to think about. So I feel led to preach on that book and I'm looking forward uh, to do so in the coming week. So we will start that next Sunday, uh, the book of Joshua, facing and building the future God's way. Then can I remind those who, are, uh, who attend uh, on Zoom uh, our Bible study, uh, that we will resume our studies, a uh, Bible study on Wednesday the 20th of January at 7.30 in the usual manner. And the theme of that particular study seems to be by, pretty much by the majority of those who normally attend, on the book of Philippians, and that is going to be Jesus, our joy. I gave them all a, a couple of choices uh, to narrow them down from the original list and they went for Philippians uh, to be the subject matter and we will consider other ones uh, obviously as we go along through the rest of the year. And can I remind you because I noticed that there's quite a number of uh, devotionals are still available both at the exit door there and also in the back, in the back hall of our daily bread. A devotional book for January through to March this year. Can I encourage you to take a copy? They are free. You don't have to pay anything. Just take one. Uh, they are, our daily bread have been with us for a long, long, long time and they are quite a wonderful source of encouragement as we begin the, the day or even any time through the day uh, considering uh, food for thought and certainly encouragement. So there is plenty of copies still there. If you don't have one, take one and may the Lord bless you as you use it. So that's all the announcements. Um, our call to worship this morning um, is, is paraphrase. I, I like to do these things when I consider the Word of God, you know, sometimes to paraphrase it, to make it a little bit more uh, you know, understandable for us. And so it's from Psalm 8. And gather in the name of Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and blessed by the Lord, we come to worship one holy God. O oh God, our God, how wonderful is your name in all the earth. Your majesty is the music of the starry skies. Yet even children of dust can sing your praises in the name of our healer the provider and the enabler let your gratitude and joy be made known O oh god our god how wonderful is your name in all the earth and so as we begin our first sunday of 2021 our first hymn is 268 O oh god of bethel by whose hand
Let us bow our heads before God in prayer. The prophet of all said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. By your grace, dear Lord, you have given us this new year. We give you thanks for more time to enjoy your goodness, more time to serve you, another year to show forth your glory, that all may see your light shine through us, and might come to faith in your Lordship, and indeed members of your kingdom. We want to thank you this morning, blessed Saviour, for bringing us together to this hour of worship. It is a privilege, it is a joy, it is a wonderful blessing that you have bestowed upon us, that we are able to come, few in number as we are, and yet we can worship you in spirit and in truth, wherever we find ourselves. Lord, you make all things new. We move into a new year with some fears about the future, but we pray that you will give us faith that as we venture into 2021, led by you, that you will give us all what we need to faithfully serve you and courageously to follow you wherever you may lead us. We pray, loving Father, that you will bless your church. We pray that you will set today amid new challenges and new situations. Give us what we need to meet these challenges and enable us, dear Lord, not to be intimidated, but rather inspire us, dear Lord, to follow your ways, to be obedient to your will and to honour your name. Give us dear Lord, the boldness to pray with wisdom and with grace and with courage and with faith. Help us, dear Lord, to put ourselves not in front of your path, but certainly behind your will. Help us, dear Lord, to trust you for what lies ahead and help us, loving Saviour, never to doubt your constant and abiding presence with them. Lord, we pray that you will help us this morning to come with honesty and that you will help us, dear Lord, to seek for your forgiveness because we are sinners. We sin every day. We fall foul of ill thoughts. We say the wrong things or we think the wrong things. We resist forgiveness to others. We resist even forgiveness from you. But Lord, may you help us today. May you help us to be able to come as we are and to seek for your forgiveness for our unfaithfulness. Help us, Father, this morning to accept your love and your kindness and your grace. And that as we worship you today, we will do so in the knowledge that we are indeed saved by grace and we are forgiven by the grace of your Son. So Lord, move us from the desire to hoard our wealth and our things that perhaps sometimes we want to keep for ourselves. Help us, Lord, to be generous with one another. Help us to be generous to those who need our help. Help us, dear Lord, to be generous both physically and indeed spiritually to others in whatever we can to help. And so, Lord, we commit all these things to you this morning. May you grant us your peace as we worship you today. For we ask it through the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Brenda if she will come and read the word to us this morning. Thank you. Our reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 33. It's in two parts, the first part verses 1 to 5, and then the second part 24 to 29. Deuteronomy 33 verses 1 to 5. These are the blessings that Moses the man of God pronounced to the people of Israel before he died. The Lord came from Mount Sinai. He rose like the sun over Edom and shone on his people from Mount Hamad. Ten thousand angels were with him, a flaming fire at his right hand. The Lord loves his people and protects those who belong to him. So we bow at his feet and obey his commands. We obey the law that Moses gave us, our nation's most treasured possession. The Lord became king of his people Israel when their tribes and leaders were gathered together. 24 to 29. About the tribe of Asher, he said, Asher is blessed more than the other tribes. May he be the favourite of his brothers, and may his land be rich with olive trees. May his towns be protect, protected with iron gates, and may he always live secure. People of Israel, no God is like your God, riding in splendour across the sky, riding the clouds that come to your aid. God has always been your defence, his eternal arms are your support. He drove out your enemies as you advanced and told you to, stay, to destroy them all. So Jacob's descendants live in peace, secure in a land full of corn and wine, where dew from the sky waters the ground. Israel, how happy you are! There is no one like you, a nation saved by the Lord. The Lord himself is your shield and your sword to defend you and give you victory. Your enemies will come begging for mercy, and you will trample them down. May God add his blessing to this, the reading of his holy word, and to his name be the praise and glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Before we hear uh, the message this morning, of course, this is the first week uh, of the new year. Uh, normally, this in the Christian calendar is the Epiphany week. Um, of course, there's no Epiphany yet. That usually is on the 6th of January, but nevertheless, uh, since we are in between, um, we thought that perhaps having an Epiphany uh, hymn will be appropriate, and 326 is that hymn as with gladness, men of all.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you spoke to your people in the pillar of cloud as they walked together in the wilderness. Speak to us through your word today that we may hear your calling us out of the wilderness places in our lives and into the new places you have promised to show us. Bless your word and us, your people. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, I want to begin by admitting with a sense of relief that I survived 2020. Let's face it, 2020 was a very difficult year. In fact, one could say that the last 12 months have felt like crawling across a minefield blindfolded. And looking ahead, no one, certainly human that is, knows what the future will bring. And this far, 2021, is more of the same. Speculations are plenty. Everyone has an opinion. But the question is simply, how should we live in times like this? How? After all, live, we must. We have no choice. Yes, we can isolate, and we are. We wear masks, we wash our hands, we follow social distances, etc. But that is only part of the story. These are practical and physical and material things we can do and we have done for the last 10 months or so. And we could argue that we have become very good at it. But this is more than a physical struggle, isn't it? It is. It has become more than just a physical thing. This is also, from our point of view, a spiritual battle. A battle of the will. A battle of the mind. A battle of the heart. A battle of the spirit. A battle of the soul. We all know that there are times and there are situations and circumstances in life, and this is one of them, which requires more than human effort and man-made solutions, good and admirable as they may be. There are times when human endeavors are just simply not good enough or not enough. Times when all our efforts and all our strivings all our man-made solutions, including financial efforts, will not give us what profoundly deep inside us we all need and we all desire. And that is the inner peace, the divine comfort, the personal assurance, the daily strength, and above all, the eternal hope in other words, we need godly assistance. We need divine guidance. We need spiritual support. And we need holy comfort. I need that. In other words, we need God's help. And I am not embarrassed to admit it. I need God's help. I need his help. And probably you need God's help too. I don't mind admitting that. Why should I? I am dependent upon him for every single thing of my life. There is no a thought in my mind that would tell me I can survive and make it on my own. None of us can. 
And anyone who dares to even think about it, you will fail miserably at that. We will fail. We need them. So how can we face, how can I, Benjamin, face the future, 2021? I was reading about a true story. I mean, it's, it's a historical fact that in the list of American presidents, one man appears twice. Grover Cleveland, the only one president to serve two non-consecutive terms. He occupied the 22nd and the 24th place in the roll call of presidents. He is also the man who dedicated the Statue of Liberty in New York, in New York's harbor. And he's the only president to have gotten married in the White House. He was 49 at the time. His bride, Frances Folsom, was 21, making her the youngest first lady in history. The romance took the nation by storm. I don't know what would happen these days if that was to happen now, but nevertheless, they survived that particular encounter. And Glover Cleveland was the son of a Presbyterian preacher who was thoroughly trained in Christian truth. He grappled with titanic issues in office and in the middle of a national financial panic, he also faced a personal crisis. He was diagnosed with cancer and endured top secret surgery, the news of which was hidden from the nation for years. But nevertheless, we are told that Cleveland kept up his strength and routinely worked past midnight. Historians have praised him for his industry, integrity, courage, and common sense. And his dying words sum up his life. This is what he said, I have tried so hard to do right. But of course, there is more to that statement. Because the secret of, Cle of President Cleveland's energy is found in the motto that he lived. It was a biblical promise, which he framed and hung directly over his bed so that he could see it every night on retiring and every morning when he awoke. I don't know who crafted the engraving for him, but I know that he valued it so highly that it hung on the wall of his law office before his election and afterwards in his bedroom at the White House. And through his life, he kept it within eyesight. It contained a family crest beneath which were set a words taken from the King James Version of Deuteronomy 33, verse 25 which Brenda read for us this morning. And this is what he says, As thy days, so shall thy strength be. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. And when asked about it, Cleveland said he awoke every morning with a firm conviction that God would give him the strength required for the work assigned to him that day. He believed, profoundly believed, God would give him sufficient strength for each day's task as long as he lived. Now this morning, we face 2021. And and. And the future ahead of us, I want us to reflect upon this promise. This, this, today, I want us to reflect upon this. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. And I want us to consider the meaning and the significance of these words. Because I believe, in all honesty, I believe that this promise can sustain all of us. When we awake in the morning and when we retire at night. It is a lifelong promise of lifetime strength. 
And if there is anything you need to take from me this morning, if you forget anything I'm going to say, please take this word from God's word as the promise for you for 2021. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. This is not physical strength. Let's be honest, some of us has passed our better days. Benjamin Abeledo is not as strong as I was when I was 17 in the army. I cannot do it anymore. I can hack it. I'm past it. So it's nothing to do with physical strength. This has something to do with spiritual strength, inner strength. The one that only God can give to you. You're not going to get it in the gym. It doesn't matter how much you love walking or how much you like to lift weights or whatever the case might be, that ain't going to do it. Because what you need is something which is from above, something which is given to you from within. It's God's strength, which no virus can touch, no life event can deny you, not take away. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is, a, I would have loved, and maybe I should have spoken with Lex during the week, but there is a wonderful hymn that actually the writer of that hymn devoted a, an entire stanza on it, which is how firm our foundation. And this is what that wonderful hymn says on this particular verse. In every condition, in sickness and in health, in poverty's veil or abounding in wealth, at home and abroad, on the land, on the sea, as thy days may demand, shall thy strength ever be. Wonderful. It's a wonderful hymn, by the way. How firm a foundation. Now Deuteronomy 33, in which this wonderful promise is found, records Moses' farewell speech to the people of Israel, giving a short time before he died. And in that farewell, God, through Moses, gave word of ammunition, a word of warning, a word of encouragement to the 12 tribes of Israel. And by virtue of the timeliness of this book, the Bible to all people of all generations, including you and me. In other words, this promise is for you as well. You believe that? I want a few heads to nod. Please engage with me. If you believe it, you must believe it. Because this is a promise for you. Do you think that God gave the promise only to 12 tribes thousands of years ago and left us bereft with no encouragement, with no word? No. The promise is for you. The promise is for me. For those who have faith in God. For those who trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. It is for all of us. And its immediate context. This verse was originally spoken to the descendants of a man named Asher. Meaning blessedness. Happy. And as it happens, it is the name of my youngest grandson. Asher. The little one. So as we consider this promise. This is what Moses said referring to Asher. And of Asher, he said, most blessed of sons be Asher. Let him be the favorite of his brothers and let him dip his foot in oil. Your bar shall be iron and bronze and as your day, so shall your strength be. There is no one like God who rise to the heavens to your help through the skies in his majesty. And listen to this. The eternal God is your dwelling place. And underneath are the everlasting arms. What a wonderful promise. 
And so as we stand looking ahead at 2021, we wonder what the future holds. And most of us probably approach this particular year with, I'm not very sure that excitement actually comes into it, but certainly huge doses of apprehension. We are aware. We are aware of the risks, we are aware of the dangers, we are aware of the difficulties, we just cannot escape it. It's right there in front of you, whether you read the papers, whether you go to the news, or whatever the case might be. The scaremongering that is going on, the fear factor, whether they are right or wrong, it doesn't matter. We just are constantly confronted with these news of apprehension and fear and worry. And we are paralyzed from it and through it. And so what does the word of God say to us to help us to cope? To lead us through it? How do we respond to all that is before us? And I have to confess to you, my friends, that as Christians and as a church, what can we do as we look into the horizon of time? And I have to be honest with you, this is a time for us to press on. This is no time to retire. This is no time to stop. This is no time to withdraw or to go absent without leave. This is no time to give up. And certainly this is no time to bask in our own glory as if we have any. We don't. No, this is a time for us to move forward in the strength of the Lord, in the knowledge that as thy day, so shall thy strength be. But of course, it's not as simple as that, is it? That's the easy bit. How do, we do, how do we do it? It's a different matter. Well, let me tell you a few things. We might begin by, first of all, acknowledging God. Now, this may be obvious, isn't it? But it's amazing how very few actually do it. Acknowledging God. As we reflect and contemplate upon the significance of these moments of time in history, it is so apparently obvious to my sadness that the so-called analysts, commentators, experts and pundits, even clergymen of all people, clergymen from national churches, have very little to say about God. Plenty about politics. Where is God in all of this? Everybody has a penny's worth of opinion. From financial conversations to toxic politics, from fake news to partisan analysis, from political correctness to identity politics, from technological solutions to material utopia, where Everything is perfect, and yet nothing is perfect. All man-made, all man-focused, all man-orientated, and God has been removed from the public square, from the dining table, from the table where they make solutions, from the public, from governments, from politicians. God is not there to be mentioned anymore. The one thing is really missing is the very God who says to us, as thy days show, shall thy strength be. It is rather striking how little his name and that of his son are mentioned in all the hype and all the headlines about our current world ills, anxieties, spiritual poverty, except for profanity, 
blasphemy and vulgar purposes. My friends, if ever there was a time for all of us to, to acknowledge God, that time is now. Amidst all the self-congratulations that we hear around the world, let us remember that without the Lord, we would have ended a long time ago. Only by his grace, we can go on from here. As the Bible says, God himself and his word teaches us that everything we have, you hear this? Everything you have, whatever that is, everything, everything, don't leave anything out of it. Everything that you have, God has given it to you. Don't you ever think otherwise. God has given you everything. He has allowed you to have it. And just as you have it, God can take it away. Everything, everything is God given to us. So let us place God where he belongs. Let us honor him. Don't neglect him. 2021 should be a better year, not because maybe the virus is over and I pray it will but simply because your understanding of God is deeper and more precious to you. You need to be a better Christian this day than you were last year. And if you are not, you need to ask the question why you are not. God has given us everything, but I need to move on. I struggle with this sermon all week. You believe that? I struggle with it because I needed to hear that myself. I do. So the second thing I want to mention to you is that iron shoes for rough roads. As mentioned earlier, these words were actually a prophecy. They were a prediction, a forecast given by Moses to the tribe of Asher. And by God's choice, this tribe was being given land on the sea, on the sea coast north of modern day Haifa, which is southern Lebanon. And Asher's land was fruitful, but it was very mountainous. And to the people who lived in hilly territory, God promised, and I quote, iron shoes for the route that they were meant to travel. And from this, we today may take a very simple application. Every new year is the beginning of a new journey, of a new road. How will we fare? What will the road be like? And will our way be rough or easy? Well, our text suggests that we will, we might, maybe will, likely have some rough and difficult roads to travel before the year is finished. And if the way to follow is, well, is, is true with flowers and soft meadows, well, maybe a velvet slippers will do. You will not need hardcore boots. No. And if we are all going to do in 2021 is sit and watch television, well, we don't need iron shoes either. Comfy socks will do just fine. But if we plan to travel rocky roads by faith and with God, we need good footwear. As sport and military instructors and as a military man myself who have been to Sandhurst and done lots of silly things really, you don't want to know. But I used to be told by my instructors sometimes, Padre, no pain, no gain. No guts, no glory, no struggles, no growth. Never forgotten it, still true today. The reality is that there are no silk slippers on the road to heaven. No, 
We need iron shoes because the road is hard. The way is demanding, the path sometimes treacherous. God gives great promises because the road itself is difficult, steep and hard to climb. Your shoes will be of iron brass, means the road ahead will be rocky and dangerous. In 2006, days before we deployed to Afghanistan for the first time to Helmand province, I was a padre for three para, the parachute regiment. We were the first battalion to deploy to Helmand, and it was a very difficult tour. But en route to Afghanistan, we were, we were sent to the Oman, just to do a little bit of acclimatization, as they call it. And in those days, I have to say, the footwear that we had was very, very poor. We went there to the desert, we were there for four weeks, in the middle of nowhere in the Oman. The terrain was hard, it was terribly hot. And we were given a pair of boots that they thought this will do you for six months. It only lasted for two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Why? Because they, they, it was difficult. It was hot. The rocks actually ripped the boots to smithereens. And as a matter of fact, we had to wear three pair of boots to that tour of Afghanistan. Three pairs of boots. Anyway, what am I telling you? If this applies to a physical pair of boots, trust me, we need to have very strong spiritual wear, food wear, to really endeavor and live. But the gods, you, but God says to us, even so, ask your days. So shall your strength be days, not day, it's plural, days. That basically means God will give us strength for each individual day in the year ahead. God will give us strength for every kind of day we, we may face. And God will give us strength to all our days until the end of our days. And therefore, would you have hard days? Well, fear not. Your strength will equal your days. Will you have days of sickness? Sadly, we will. But fear not, your strength will equal your days. Will you have days of doubt and confusion? Probably. Fear not, your strength will equal your days. Now, <clears throat> I take great comfort from this promise because, well, I mean, you know that already, but in case you didn't know, at the age of 62, I find this promise means more to me than it did 40 years ago. And I'm going to tell you why. When you are young, you feel strong and able to take on the world, as I did. I feel immortal. In your 30s, you can work for hours and not feel tired. But in your 60s, your body starts seeing or sending you unexpected messages that all is not well. You aren't as strong as you used to be. Your energy doesn't last as long. Your stamina seems to disappear rather quickly. And the parts of your body that seem invincible are now beginning to show signs of, well, you know, wear and tear, as they say. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Because what is it like to be in your 70s and in your 80s? It's the same for all of us, isn't it? Even if we exercise every day and take a handful of vitamins, supplements, in this life, we all wear out eventually. And that is precisely where this promise becomes so significant and precious. We discover with the passing of time that God's strength is more than enough for everything we might face. He is enough. 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 As God helps us, we find more and more of what we need. And when the moment comes to leave this life, as we will one day, we find the strength we need to make that final journey. We go from God to God, from life to life, from strength to strength, from joy to joy, from love to love, from God by faith to God by sight, and from Christ within to Christ enthroned in heaven. 
peace at last, no more tears, no more suffering, all at rest in him. Isn't it wonderful? Will you not? Isn't it wonderful? Strength for today, a wonderful hope and eternal peace on the last time. And my final point, there's always a final point with Benjamin. Well, strength for the new year. As your day, so shall your strength be. What does this suggest for us at the start of 2021? Well, it means that God's strength will be there when we need it and not before. We will never find a day when God's strength is lacking. We will have strength as long as our days last. Therefore, we need not to look anxious ahead. There's no help in doing so. Just think who is promising you that promise and that blessing to you. It is the one who made us. It is the one who appointed our days. It is the, it is the one who loved us from eternity. It is the one whose love will never fail. It is the one whose resources are unlimited. It is the one who gave himself for us. He, God himself, Christ our Saviour. If such a God has made such a promise, we may be sure, you can be sure, that he will keep his promise, not only in this life, but in the life to come. And so in conclusion, these are some takeaways for you to take home with you to think and for the rest of the year. Practical lessons we should take from this verse. Number one, take each day as it comes. Sufficient is the day. Two, don't try to force the future. Let God lead. He knows the way better than you and I do. Number three, do not be full of anxious care. Why? He cares for you. He knows what you need. He knows where you are. He is with you. Number four. Do not do each day what God gives you to do. Obey Him. Honor Him. Engage with Him. Do His will. Number five. Rejoice in the Lord always. Thank Him and be joyful. Bring joy back into life. And in all the misery that we see out there, let the joy of the Lord give you a smile. It will serve you better than anything else. But number six, when you're really in need of comfort and assurance, why don't you run to the cross where Christ is waiting for you? It is the place of refuge. It is the place where he won our salvation. It is the place where our eternal life is secure. Run to the cross. And so, my friends, if you do these things, if we dare to trust in God, in the words of an old preacher who ended his sermon on this text this way, I leave that with you. Christ's feet were pierced with nails, that we might have iron shoes for the road. We cannot succeed this year without Christ, but with him by our side, we can face whatever may come with confidence and with joy. Happy and blessed 2021, my dear people. It is time to put on your iron shoes. The day of March has come. The day of going forward in faith is with us. May God help us to press on and to know him in 2021 and faithfully serve him. Amen. And may God bless that word to us and to his name be the praise and the glory. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, you are with us every transition and change of life. And as we enter into this new year with excitement, yes, because we're still alive, you have afforded us another day of life. We are excited because it is your gift, 
but you know too that also we have some anxiety. But nevertheless, we record your deep compassion and presence and abounding love. We thank you for the gifts and talents and skills with which you have blessed us. We thank you for the experiences that has brought us to this moment of time. And we thank you for the work of others that gives breath and depth to our lives. Be with us as we move forward in faith, rejoicing with you and supporting one another. May we not neglect you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to give you the honour that you deserve and to place you where you belong. We begin a new year with you, hoping that this year will be different and be better than last year. Hoping we will be better persons ourselves, hoping our work will be improved, hoping our marriages will get better, hoping our families will be stronger. Lord, we place our hope in you, for you are the author of our lives, the sustainer of our lives, the giver of all things. O oh Lord, as your days, so shall your strength be. May that be our, your promise to us for 2021. We pray for our churches that your spirit will be alive for all to experience you. We pray for our country's leaders that they will use wisdom in their decision making. Lord, awaken within them, within their minds, within their spirits, within their souls, the reality that you are there. We pray for country, our country, that as we continue to come out of these difficult times, the Lord, you will give us a sense of hope. We pray for our world that relations among all people will be better as a new beginning for the United Kingdom away from Europe in terms of relationship. But nevertheless, the worry, the anxiety and all the antagonism that this has created between peoples, between nations, between families, between communities, Lord, we pray May a sense of your nearness, a sense of your wisdom prevail and give us your peace in the midst of the strife. Lord, we pray for those among us and within our fellowship, within our church, within our community, within our families who are not well, for those who are struggling with ill health, for those, dear Lord, who are isolated for such a long time, for those, dear Lord, who feel abandoned, who feel lonely, who are struggling with ill health. Lord, we pray for those, Father, who are grieving, still grieving, either from last year or for even from recent days. Lord, we pray, may your comfort and peace surround them. And may you give them, dear Lord, that strength that only you can give. And so, Lord, gracious Father, we have no idea what this year holds for us, but we know you hold that future and you hold us by your loving hands. May thy strength be sufficient for all our days and may we trust you. May we grow to be better Christians, to be better children of you and to love you more deeply and to honor your name. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his dear sake. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the end of our service and we sing our final hymn. Well, you know what I mean. 400. It's difficult, really. It's difficult. Sometimes I'm just forgetting, but you know what I'm talking about. Four, 465, our final hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Let us make this to be our prayer for this day and for the coming year.
heart now in peace, for your eyes have seen the salvation which God has prepared for all people. Grow in strength and wisdom, and bring forth a harvest of righteousness and praise. And may God smile upon you and make you strong and wise. May Christ Jesus share his inheritance with you freely. And may this Holy Spirit open your eyes to the presence of God's Son. Go in peace to love and to serve him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.